coming up. We've been uh, deliberating a lot. It's, it's fog up here in the area. And we're back in the Crinan Canal. I running Polaris on ground. Polaris and Alnica both are sizable boats. We pulled out both sails. We extended the length of the wheels of our dinghy Fred. It's getting tough. Back to Larks. Concludes the sailing season 2023. So what's next now? Good morning. It's uh, Thursday, the 7th of September. It's a wonderful day today. The sun is out, it's shining. It's almost 20 degrees already at uh, half past nine in the morning. And uh, there's no wind today, beautiful day. And uh, we're enjoying the warmth of the sun. Now, let me see what we plan to do today. We've been uh, deliberating a lot during the last few days. Uh, what we should do. We're currently up here in Oban, in Carrera Marina, and uh, we have to go down here to Larks in the end. And we want to be there in about two weeks time, two and a half weeks time at the latest. So we have a few options. We can either, option A, we can go around the Mall of Kintyre down here, and then up somehow to Larks. Uh, we could do that directly. We could do down through the Sound of Isla and around. We could do around down here and then through the Cory Reckon. That's something we looked at as well. And uh, we can also do a shortcut through the Crinan Canal and then leisurely go into Larks. Our main concern is this system of bad weather that is coming in in the second half of uh, next week. And uh, so that leaves us basically until Tuesday evening to get into a good harbor. And there's not many good harbors around in the area south of here until uh, we're around the Mall of Kintyre. Also, uh, looking at the weather forecast for tomorrow, the visibility seems to be a bit patchy. Uh, and it may well be that we have some fog around here in the area which is not very which is not very pleasant you see here that's uh, it's it's fog up here in the area everything that's pink basically so we we don't have a, a very good forecast for tomorrow and Saturday um, and then there is this storm coming uh, next week and we need about three days to go around the Mall of Kintyre from here. So we decided against it and said no we're going uh, through the Crinan Canal, take that shortcut, take it easy and uh, we can do that basically in any weather. The reason why we didn't go through the Cory Reckon, that was a plan for tomorrow as well. Uh, tomorrow is Neeps, so there's uh, not a lot of stream. Uh, from that point of view it might be ideal but still um, there is fog and uh, there is maybe some wind and if there is wind it comes from the wrong direction so it will be against the stream the, the current through it and it will also be on our nose so uh, as a cautionary decision we also said we will not go through Cory Reckon tomorrow. Uh, we shall see how the weather is maybe we'll regret but um, that's how it is. So today it's off to Crinan. We will check into the canal uh, in this afternoon. That's 24 miles to go, about uh, four hours uh, to motor down there. And uh, it's supposed to be a lovely day. the first time this year we can sail in t-shirt and shorts and it's almost too hot for t-shirts and shorts so lovely day your eyes are heavy with the weight of the world what's in the light you never could have found even if you never flown before Can't 
And we're back in the Crinan Canal. This is our third passage of this beautiful shortcut so far. Each time it was different and each time it was a wonderful experience, meeting nice people and enjoying the wonders of the historic technology and nature. For those who haven't watched it yet, episode number 10 on our channel contains the full story of our first passage of the Crinan Canal back in 2022. We leave a link in the video description. Little do we know about the mishap that waits for us after the next bend. The concrete and stone walls of the locks are rough and dirty and so we fit our fender boards to protect Polaris and our fenders. Good morning, it's uh, Friday the 8th of September. It's a beautiful morning, an autumn morning. It's quite damp here but uh, the sun is out, it's already quite warm. And um, we are in day two in Crinan Canal. See where we can go probably we hope we can get through almost all of it so that we can go out tomorrow that's uh, the idea uh, yesterday was a bit of an eventful day um, i took quite a dent in my self-confidence as a skipper by running polaris on ground we touched the shoulder here of the canal when i was a bit distracted in a narrow turn i think we hit it with the, the wings of our keel, with the appendices of our keel, uh, we scratched on the, on the bottom. So when we, lift it, when we lift her out, we will see whether there, whether there is any damage. We can't see anything, so uh, uh, she looks pretty fine on the surface, but uh, I think we'll see what's on the keel. Thank you, Mike. All the best. Have a good trip. I think 13's open, so it's okay. Okay, just okay so we go. Yeah. So we gas through. Perfect. Bye. Bye. Bye, Mike. Thank you. We could do four knots. That's the maximum speed in the canal. And uh, we know from Mike that uh, there's nothing coming to our uh, in our way, so they're doing this actually quite well. You know exactly what's coming, and uh, so there's there's nobody coming down. We have a free canal up to the next lock. At the next lock, lock number 13, there is another boat waiting for us. We were with them in the first two locks yesterday, and uh, we're going to continue our path uh, today with them. It's not too busy at the moment here on the canal. We booked our transit uh, the day before, so I called on Wednesday for entering on Thursday and that wasn't a problem. And uh, actually there's, there's the, these three boats today uh, that are going this way and that's it. So it's not too busy. Welcome team Alnika with Skipper Mike and his crew. Polaris and Alnika both are sizable boats leaving not a lot of space in the lock chamber for the boats to move around. Passing lock 13, we found that with Alnica going into the lock first, there is awfully little space for our large overhanging solar arch. And so we agree that going forward, Polaris would enter first, letting Alnica snug in partially under our solar arch. Like this, there is better use of the length of the lock chamber. Let me explain the process of passing a lock going uphill. Upon arrival, 
make sure that the lock chamber is empty. We have a large boat ahead of us and they always leave the lock full. In great teamwork, Catherine walks up to the next lock, makes sure it is empty and opens the tailgates. We enter and make fast our lines and keep Polaris stationary whilst Alnica enters the lock. Once they have made fast their lines, the lower gates, called tail gates and tail valves are closed. Then the sluice valves of the upper gates are opened and the lock is filled with water, gently lifting the boats up to the next level. During that phase, the lines must be constantly adjusted to the change of the water level. Once the lock chamber is full, the upper sluice gates are opened and the boats exit the lock. For going downhill, just reverse the process. There are a total of seven bridges crossing the canal, which increases the overall excitement. All of them are operated by very friendly staff, Mike and his colleagues, and swing away to let the boats pass through. Here, on the top of the canal in Kernbaum, we enjoy lunch on Alnica. This canal brings people together. Thank you for a lovely lunch and we look forward to a pint in Tarver tonight. After the short break, we continue our way down the final three locks to the sea lock in Adrishik. Hey, I heard you want to leave this place but we grew up this old town Just put it all behind Remember you Always find somewhere to hide when we were kids So we could see and hear the water run River's gonna cry when you're gone Continue the last leg from Ardrishik to Tarbert, motoring and soaking up what is probably the last of the summer sun in the company of Alnica, and we round up the day with some lovely cold ones on Polaris. Thank you, Team Alnica. You were great company, and we gelled into an efficient team mastering the locks. We hope to see you again soon. River's gonna cry when you're gone. Morning. It's uh, Monday, the 9th of September. We are just leaving the nice place of Tarbert, where we spent a couple of days. It's a nice and sunny day, not a lot of wind again, about nine knots. 
and the plan is to sail over to the Isle of Arran to Brodick so that hopefully tomorrow we can make a hike on uh, Goatfell. I'm not sure whether we can sail today because there is, as I said, not a lot of wind. So we'll see. It's a lovely day. Uh, we pulled out both sails despite the fact we're only having like seven to ten knots of wind. But uh, we try to enjoy some slow sailing. After all, it's after all, it's one of the last days of the season probably, and um, we try to get there before the sun sets. It's a bit squally out here, and the wind has freshened up. We, uh, in the meantime, had about 17 knots. In a little gust now it's coming down to 14 again but um, we took in a precautionary reef in the in the foresail just to be on the safe side I don't trust this weather too much I think it could be a bit gusty it could become a bit gusty so um, yeah we just have to be on our toes <laughs> During the last winter, we extended the length of the wheels of our dinghy Fred, so that they stop rubbing her belly and with our new, much lighter e-propulsion electric outboard, it is finally possible to pull Fred up a firm surface such as a jetty or a sandy beach. After a short exploration landfall into Brodick, where we found the co-op nearby, we make it back to Fred to take us back to Polaris. For those following our relationship with Fred know that this is a story of love and hate. Or perhaps it is just us putting poor old Fred into the most impossible situations. However, in the meantime we seem to have found a base to steady our relationship. A next step is probably to buy some simple wellies to be closer to her in the water without getting our feet wet. There is room for improvement but we will be getting there. It's quarter to nine in the morning, beautiful day, and uh, we're going on a hike today. The last one of the season, at least the last one of the sailing season, and uh, we're going up to Goatfell, the highest mountain on the island of Arran. Actually, mountain is not really correct. Back in Switzerland, the classification of the mountains is quite simple. On top, there are the over 4000s, followed by the over 3000s, meters that is. And the rest are basically looked at as being hills. Here in Scotland, as many other things in the United Kingdom, things are a wee bit more complicated. Here we have Monroes, Corbetts, Grahams, Marilyns and Donalds. All these names are linked to the compiler of the list of respective hills in Scotland. While all Munros are mountains, not all mountains are Munros. To be called a Munro, named after Sir Hugh Munro, a 
mountain needs to be higher than 3,000 feet or more than 914 meters. It's getting tough. <sighs> now, with 2,867 feet or 874 meters, Goatfell is not a Monroe. Goatfell is a Corbett, meaning having been listed by a certain John Rook Corbett as being over 2,500 feet, but less than 3,000 feet, and have a drop of at least 500 feet between each listed hill and any adjacent higher one. This is called a prominence of 500 feet. Next level down are the grams. Hills between 2000 and 2500 feet and with a prominence of 492 feet. Depending on the compiler of the list, both of 1992, they were also called Marilyns. Originally both, Grahams and Marilyns were called LCs for LCs, lower Corbett's. Still confused? Believe me, me too. And finally, there are 89 Donalds. These are hills in lowland Scotland that exceed 2000 feet in height. But besides all the confusion about the classification of Scottish hills, this was a beautiful tour and we enjoyed a spectacular panoramic view from one of the highest Corbett's in the area. Come on. Uh, we are now ready to hit the road or hit the seas back to Larks. The last leg of our season, I think. Uh, there's not a lot of wind, uh, about six, seven knots or so, but it's and it's coming right from the front. So we're motoring up there. It's 15 nautical miles, about two and a half hours to go. And uh, tonight we should be back in a berth and uh, have all the pleasures of a marina again. Prodig is the main place here on the island of Arran, and uh, it's a nice place. It's quite touristy, so it's a good infrastructure for tourists. It's got about 12 or 15 visitor moorings, they're all for free, so that's a bonus. Uh, over there there's also good anchorage, so uh, I think this is a good place to be there, unless uh, anything in a easterly, with an easterly, so from northeast to southeast over east, that's, it's no good because it's rolly, but otherwise it's a nice place and I think uh, um, uh, good infrastructure. Over there, that's Goatfell and uh, it took us four hours from the bottom to the top and back which is pretty good they say calculate four to five hours so we did it in the minimum time and uh, but we're quite exhausted and uh, we're leaving Brodick tonight uh, because there's not a lot of wind right now um, but the wind should turn more towards the east and maybe freshen up a bit so we're a bit wary uh, that there might be a bad swell coming in tonight uh, causing a very unpleasant and rolly night and uh, we just want uh, silent and good night sleep so uh, we decided to go into a marina where there's less rocking I'm a tough cookie And this concludes the sailing season 2023. So what's next now? Until the new sailing season starts in April, we will give you insights in our daily life in the marina, reveal the damage of our grounding in the Crinan Canal, 
showing how we lift the comfort level to new highs by installing a water central heating on Polaris, raising the water line and other winter maintenance jobs when Polaris is out of the water, a boat tour and on multiple requests explain our passage planning tool and we will do a sit down episode where we will explain our exciting plans for 2024. But first we will take a short break and travel back home to Switzerland to see our family and friends over the festive season. Stay tuned, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. Music